Uh, welcome to lecture 6 uh, of computation complexity. In fact, this will be a very brief lecture, right? So, we have already seen P and P and what are polynomial time reductions. So, in this mini lecture, I will just describe what is NP complete or what is the definition of NP complete, right? Okay, so the, the definition again, the, the definition numbers are from SIPSER 7.34. A language B is NP complete if first of all B must be in NP and all the A in NP must be reducible to B in polynomial time, right. So what does it mean? So if all the languages in A should be reducible to B in polynomial time and there are several problems or several languages that are known to be NP complete. and um, the one reason is that you can think of these problems as the hardest problems in NP. Uh, so we know that NP contains P and this is probably uh, uh, this is probably these are the probably the, the more easily solvable problems. However, NP complete problems are those for which we do not know of a polynomial time algorithm yet. So we'll, in, a, in a moment we will see why I call them hardest problems in NP. Um, in, in, in a way, if we solve these problems, if we have a solution for these problems, then we will have solutions for all the problems in NP. So when I say solutions, I mean efficient polynomial time deciders, right. Um, so just to just pictorially depict, so suppose this is NP and suppose this is NP complete, right. So now if B is in NP complete, then not only is B in NP complete, all the other languages can be reduced to B. All the other languages in, in NP can be reduced to B, right. So the main consequence, one of the main consequences is that if B is an NP complete language, right, and if B is shown to have a polynomial time algorithm, right, B is in P, B is shown to be in P, then it means that for all a in NP, A has a polynomial time algorithm. That means all the languages in NP have polynomial time algorithms. That means that NP is equal to P or P is equal to NP, right. Why is this the case? Because uh, if B is in P, then for all A in NP, right, we know that A reduces to because of the definition of NP completeness. We said we started by saying that B is NP complete. And now we are saying that by assumption B is in P. Now together uh, we saw in the last lecture that these two together imply that A is in P. Now this means that for all A in NP, A is in P, which means that NP is a subset of P, which, which again is same, same, same as saying that P is equal to NP. Right. So, if so, th again, this is an intuition, or this is the reason why we call them as the hardest problems in NP, the NP complete languages. Because if any of these has a polynomial time solution, then we have shown that P is equal to NP. So there are multiple uh, NP complete problems known. So one of which is uh, SAT, uh, three SAT, clique, vertex cover, independent set, uh, uh, subset sum. Uh, 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 integer linear programming, uh, many many such problems are there. So in fact to show that P is equal to NP, all you have to do is for any of these problems to demonstrate a polynomial time algorithm. But it has so turned out that even doing that has proved very tricky, right. Nobody has been able to do it so far. And to show that P is not equal to NP, we have to show that none uh, like you pick some problem and it does not have a polynomial time algorithm. Some problem in NP or some problem in NP complete does not have a polynomial time algorithm. And showing something does not have a polynomial time algorithm is not easy because um, how do you say something cannot be solved in polynomial time because given a problem you could approach the same problem in many many different ways. How do you say that none of these approaches work? So it's very difficult to show that it is not possible to do something in this much time 
or polynomial time or this much. Uh, so these so-called lower bounds is what they are called. You cannot solve this problem in this much time. These kind of statements are very hard to prove. Anyway, so uh, the, the point I want to make here is that if B is an NP-complete language and if you show that B is in polynomial time, then this implies all automatically that P is equal to NP. And the next consequence, uh, next consequence I want to mention is suppose B is a com uh, NP complete language and suppose C is another language in NP and suppose we can reduce B to C in polynomial time, then C is also NP complete, right. B is in NP complete, C is in NP and B reduces to C in polynomial time, then C is also NP complete. Why? So we have to show two things. One is that, so now we, to show that C is NP complete, we have to show that C is in NP. That is already shown, this is given. So condition one is satisfied. Two is that for all A in NP, A reduces to C, right? So point two, for all A in NP, we know that B is in NP complete. So we know that A reduces to B, right? Because B is NP complete. But we also know that B reduces to C. So we have this and we have this. A reduces to B and B reduces to C. So together these imply that A reduces to C. Again, this is something that I mentioned in the previous lecture, but I didn't give a proof. I asked you to think about it. So this is something that you can um, you can take for granted now, but you can work out the proof. So this together means that for all A in NP, A is reducible to C in polynomial time which is a condition 2. So this is also verified. So B is NP complete, B reduces to C, where C is in NP implies that C is also NP complete. So it's like this, suppose B is NP complete, sorry, B is NP complete, B is reducible to C, right? B reduces to C. But we already know that all the other languages in NP reduces to B. So by transitivity of reductions, right, A reduces to B, B reduces to C, it follows that A reduces to C. So again, the definition of NP completeness is that a language B is NP complete if B is in NP and all the other languages in NP are reducible to B. And they're called the hardest problems in, N in NP because if we show that any one of them has a polynomial time algorithm, it follows that P is equal to NP. So if we solve them, we have automatically solved all the problems in NP, right? And finally, um, again, how do you show that something is NP complete? We have to show that, first of all, we have to show that that language is in NP, right? Second, we have to show that all the other languages reduce to this. So that doesn't seem like an easy task. Like how do you show that every other language reduces to this, right? Like because there are so many languages in NP, how do you show that all of them reduce to this? So this is um, what is known as Cook-Levin theorem. And this is what really started off the theory of NP completeness, right? So which is what I mentioned in one of the earlier lectures. So they showed that Cook and Levin independently, right? Cook was in, uh, uh, I think, Canada and Levin was in uh, Russia. They independently, one in Canada, one in Russia, they independently showed that uh, uh, SAT is NP complete. SAT or 3 SAT is an NP complete. So the details of this we will see in the next lecture, how it is done. So now just, just a small bit of history I want to mention. Uh, this was done in 71, right? So now it is 2021. So we have exactly 50 years uh, uh, f from uh, from when this was proved to be NP-complete. SAT was proved to be NP-complete and therefore uh, starting off the area of NP-completeness, right? So uh, there is there is this uh, well-known con conference in uh, uh, computer science theory called STOC, S-T-O-C, right? And recently, the 2021 edition of stock happened, uh, which is a, which happened to be the 53rd edition of stock. 
and Steve Cook's paper, right? Steve Cook's paper appeared in Stock 1971, right? So again, he this was independent, so they didn't publish together. Steve Cook's paper appeared in 1971 stock, which was a third stock, right? So stock stands for Symposium on Theory of Computation, and there he proved that uh, SAT is NP complete. And in the 53rd stock that happened maybe a few weeks back, uh, there was a discussion by by Steve Cook, uh, Rich, uh, uh, Levin. Um, then Richard Carr, who also did a bunch of uh, early results in the theory of NP-completeness with a couple of other computer scientists, right? So they, they, so first Steve Cook talks about his experience, then Levin talks about his experience, and then at the end they, they together discuss and, and take some questions, right? Uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's like a, uh, I think one and a half hour video. Uh, and uh, at, if you're interested in the history of how this evolved and, and, and how maybe some of the technical details may be, may be not uh, familiar right now, but uh, if you, you can at least uh, watch the interesting history parts. So now obviously Cook and Levin are much older, Cook, is, Cook says he's 81 years old, but uh, it's an interesting watch if you have the time. So I've pasted the YouTube link here. Um, uh, perhaps, uh, or you could just search for this in YouTube, Stock 2021 50th Anniversary of Cook Levin Theorem. Uh, and with that, I uh, conclude this mini lecture. Uh, thank you.